among the simplest chemical compounds that we can envision is H2, hydrogen, which is the form that we're likely to encounter it as a gas at room temperature. And we had seen before that each hydrogen has one valence electron. So in H2, there are a total of two valence electrons that we need to allocate and that we can share them between the two in the form of a single bond and thereby satisfy the duet rule for both of the hydrogen atoms. And we predict that this particular species, H2, will be stable. And it is. But it is possible to break this bond, particularly using catalysts such as nickel, platinum, and palladium. And what happens when H2 sits down on these particular catalysts, it breaks up into individual hydrogen atoms. So what we get is a situation where each hydrogen atom maintains one electron, like this. So we have individual hydrogen atoms. And we notice that in each case, the duet rule is not satisfied. So we predict that these individual species as hydrogen atoms is not going to be stable. And in fact, since they have an odd number of electrons, they are technically free radicals and are incredibly reactive. And in fact, this is the intermediate that is generally involved in many reduction reactions or hydrogenation reactions. Oxygen atoms have six valence electrons. In a number of ionic compounds, the oxide ion forms O2 minus. So to account for this particular ion, we take the six valence electrons. We notice that it has a minus two charge so we need to add two additional electrons. So that gives us a total of eight electrons that we allocate around the oxide ion as such. And we notice that if we do that, we are able to complete the octet for the oxygen atom. So here we have a Lewis dot model of oxide. Based on that model and based on that theory, we would predict that oxide ion would be stable. And it turns out that in ionic compounds, it is stable. Nitrogen atoms each possess five valence electrons. In reactions with the very electropositive metals, such as magnesium, the nitride ion can form N3 minus. The three minus tells us that we have to add three additional electrons. Since there are five valence electrons to begin with, that will give us a total of eight electrons around nitrogen in the form of the nitride ion. We notice that if we are able to accomplish this, that now nitrogen has a complete octet. So we would predict that if it's capable of formation, the nitride ion would be stable because it satisfies the octet rule. We had already derived the Lewis structure for the important gas ammonia, NH3. Because of hydrogen bonding, ammonia can be easily liquefied. If you go a little bit below zero, you can actually turn ammonia gas into a liquid. This uh, ease of liquefaction led to ammonia being one of the very first materials used as a refrigerant. Not only that, liquid ammonia is an interesting solvent that has properties that are akin to, but distinct from, water. And in particular, one interesting chemical species that can be created in liquid ammonia, we create by uh, 
dissolving sodium metal. You're probably familiar that if you put sodium metal into water, you get a violent explosion. If you do the same into liquid ammonia, you still get a reaction, but the effect is to remove one of the hydrogens as H+. So what we get is the following species, which we call the amidine. So we get NH2 minus. Since we just lost the hydrogen, the electrons are left behind. Now, if we did not know that that was how amid ion was created, but we just wanted to create the Lewis structure for NH2 minus, we would reason as follows. Each nitrogen atom contributes five valence electrons. Each hydrogen contributes one. So that gives us seven electrons. Since the overall ion has a minus one charge, that means we need to add one additional electron. So there must be eight electrons involved in the entire system. We allocate those so that we can satisfy the wet rule for each hydrogen, which you're able to do. And we're able to satisfy the octet rule for nitrogen. So this suggests that this ion should be stable, at least in the proper solvent environment. We have already derived the Lewis structure for the gas methane with formula CH4. A number of important chemical species can be derived from methane. For example, if we remove one hydrogen atom so that we're left with the species CH3, we have the so-called methyl free radical. Each carbon has four valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one, so we have a total of seven electrons. Right away, we recognize that we have an odd number of electrons, so we're likely to have a free radical species. We can satisfy the duet rule for the three hydrogens, but we are unable to complete the octet for carbon, so we have an unpaired electron, and we would expect that methyl radical would be reactive, and it turns out that it is. Suppose we remove one electron from this system, so that now we make CH3 plus 1. So we have a plus 1 charge. We often call this the methyl cation. We notice that we have six valence electrons, so we're not able to satisfy the octet at all. We're able to satisfy the duet rule, but we notice that we have an unpaired um, uh, spot where we are missing two electrons. So we would expect that one of the areas of reactivity of a molecule like this, it's electron deficient, is that it might accept a lone pair from some species that is capable of donating a lone pair. And that again, species such as this are incredibly important and we call these materials electrophiles.